After playing over 850 days in Rise of Kingdoms, it is time for us to revisit Minamoto. Is he still worth it in 2021? Because yeah, a lot has changed about this game, including new versions of KVK and more. So stick around in this video for our rundown of whether or not it's still worth picking up Minamoto, as well as five of the very best builds to smash with this commander. Hello my friends and welcome back, I'm Chiskel Gaming, a sponsored content creator for Rise of Kingdoms, and today we're going to be talking about Minamoto, who in my estimation still does have value in Rise of Kingdoms. If you like Rise of Kingdoms guides that help you get value and smash your enemies, hey, consider smashing the subscribe button for daily Rise of Kingdoms videos. I was revisiting my old video about Minamoto, and I was like, wow, so much about the game has changed! So Minamoto, in my estimation, is still pretty solid. If you want to jump, by the way, to the talent builds, there are going to be links in the description to each of the builds, so you can feel free to jump ahead to that. But my overall recommendation for this commander, if you're considering buying him, is as follows. First and foremost, if you are in the early game, in other words, you've just started playing, you are planning to be or are going to be a spender in this game, then Minamoto is a pretty solid pickup. He is going to be super powerful as one of the only expertise legendaries you're going to see on the field for some number of weeks and months. That is going to give you a huge, just huge leg up when you're battling against other players, assuming you're doing that, and you probably will be in those early kingdom days. Minamoto is still very, very good there. But the question you're probably wondering is, does his value continue beyond that? And at this point, yeah, we've got a lot of legendary commanders we can choose from here. All of them, well, a whole bunch of them, expertise that we can work with. So what I'll say about Minamoto's value over time is that, of course, it will diminish. You will get value for him. I would say for at least a solid year, you'll be using him in the field. But once you start to open up more options, you might be switching to other commanders that are stronger. Minamoto's strength is that he does a huge amount of single target damage. He's got really great march speed, a little bit of an attack boost. He's got the best damage bonus to Barbarians that we've got in the game on a Legendary Commander, a solid 50% boost, and this debuff, which is highly underrated. This is a very powerful debuff, increasing the damage taken by the target. So everybody hitting the target deals more damage for three seconds, and that is a 30% damage boost that everybody does. It's honestly a big deal, and it's your attacks onto the target that have a 10% chance to make that happen. So Minamoto will still be a solid debuffer, but will lose value over time for battling against other players compared to commanders that do area of effect damage, that perhaps have more march speed or stats that they offer, or even go all in on a utility play, offering buffs or debuffs that are even more valuable than what Minamoto has. But where he still shines... Even in the late game, I use him literally every single day for Barbarians and Barbarian Forts. That's right, we are in Heroic Anthem KVK right now, which is the sort of end game, high level stuff after you've got your T5. This is an interesting, fun place to play, Kingdom versus Kingdom battling against other players. We have level 14 and 15 Barb Forts. Do you see here that the suggested rally is 2.8 million T5 troops, okay? Um, yeah, you need or want a commander like Minamoto leading those rallies. You absolutely want a commander like Minamoto to be running that show. And I'll tell you, I mean, you can use other commanders that aren't peacekeepers, and they work, they're cute, they require more action points for the person leading the rally, which I suppose is fine if they want to spend those action points, but I have been extremely happy launching fort rallies with my Minamoto and double C combination. And even without my best gear equipped, we're doing just fine over here. For those of you that have played Heroic Anthem KVK, you know this is a very low number of severe wounds. We've def certainly done better, but you get the idea. Some of these reports come back and people have like 12,000 severely injured troops. It's a pretty big hospital bill. So if I've gone too far off the deep end here, let me rein it back in and, and big picture, Minamoto will still have value for you long term, is great in the early game, in the mid game he'll fade as you start to get access to other commanders you would rather use in the field, and then in the late game you're going to be using him primarily for barbarians, which I would argue is a pretty important activity, however, 
I will mention that it is primarily the people who continue to spend big that are leading those barbarian fort rallies in this heroic anthem version of KVK. At the time of this recording, that's the case. Of course, that could also change. If you are going to be buying your way into Minamoto, that does come from the VIP shop. It is the only way you can get his sculptures. And as far as bundles go, I mean, I like to value the legendary commander sculptures that come in these different chests over here at about 2,000 gems a pop. That is the price you would pay for a legendary commander sculpture in the VIP shop. The reality is that there are, of course, many ways to get legendary commander sculptures in the game for less gems. Events like the Wheel of Fortune and Card King and more. And so what I'll say is that if you don't go for Minamoto, there are going to be plenty of other cavalry legendary commanders that you can use universal legendary commander sculptures on. Minamoto, you cannot use universals on, but I will say of the bundles that are in here, the ones that have the Book of the Covenant are probably the more compelling bundles. You're going to need those to level up your castle, and that is going to be critical for your journey to T5 troops, which, yes, free-to-play players, they can make their way to T5. So if you are going to go for Minamoto, he is still the cheapest legendary to expertise in the game. And for perspective, you're spending less than 200 bucks to fully expertise this commander, whereas, man, the last couple months they had a special for Lu Bu, a legendary commander that is a part of a crossover event, and they were charging in the realm of 20 bucks for 10 sculptures of Lu Bu. There were a few other things in there, but I, I you know, it was, it was, it felt pretty pricey to me, okay? So it's, it doesn't get any cheaper than Minamoto sculptures for dollars, and I get that that's still expensive. Make some smart choices for yourself. But let's jump over now to the talent builds. The first build I'm going to show you today is the build that I am using in Heroic Anthem KVK to rally Barbarian Forts. There might be better, but this is working so well. It's working so well. We've gone all in on a Rage Generation plan in the skill tree. We've taken a bare minimum of points in the Peacekeeping tree getting a little bit of march speed, reducing our action point cost, and dealing extra damage to Barbarian Forts. This is a build that is all in on taking down Barbarian Forts, and we did pick up a little bit of extra march speed in the Cavalry Tree. If you're rallying Barbarian Forts and you want to go all in on that plan, start by going over to Insight to reduce your action point cost, then you make your way over to Rejuvenate. From there, you can either go all in on the points that we put in the Peacekeeping Tree or in the Skill Tree, both of those approaches are fine. The last points I would put in are the Cavalry Tree. You could, of course, just drop one point in here at the start for some extra march speed, which would be pretty reasonable. The next build that we have prepared is for battling lots of Barbarians. Now, I didn't think at the time that I recorded my Minamoto 2020 video that you would need sustain on a Peacekeeper. But as it turns out, Barbarians are really high level now. <laughs> and so when you need to be battling Barbarians over level 40... Yes, it is very helpful to have Curing Chant healing some number of troops after each one that you battle down. That way you can continue to battle for a very long time. Also, this is true for Barbarians over level 30 or even level 25. You get a lot of value from this Peacekeeping Tree and going all the way to Curing Chant. So if you were to make this build, I would do something very similar to what I recommended for the previous build in terms of the investment order. Start by going to get Insight and perhaps a little bit extra March Speed then get Rejuvenate, then go all the way to Curing Chant. If what you're doing is battling Barbs, get Trophy Hunter. If you're also going to use this build for Barbarian Forts, which I did for a very long time, get Mighty Force. Yes, I get that some of these points are sort of wasted. For instance, if you're rallying a fort, the Trophy Hunter Talent Points don't do anything. The Curing Chant Points don't do anything. But this is a versatile Barbarian build. It's a, a full PvE focus, okay? And then after that, we went all the way up to Undying Fury to get a little bit of extra rage generation. Now, as we shift gears a little bit here, well, one intermediate build that we've got that is between player versus environment and player versus player is when you're in KVK, you do need to rally a pass to get into the next zone. I found this build to be the highest damage we found, the fastest takedown possible for a Barbarian pass. And those passes, by the way, are barbarians, even though they'll say stronghold, it is a stronghold after you take the pass, a barbarian while you're battling it down, at least at the time of this recording. So I would recommend this exact build if you're rallying a pass. I'm going to assume it's a max level Minamoto. Otherwise, what are you doing? 
Someone with a max level Minamoto should do that. The next build I want to show you is for open field combat. This I find works very, very well when you're battling against other players for short skirmishes. And most cases, it will be short skirmishes. If you'd like to see me using this build, battling in King's Land in KVK Season 3, I'll have a card up in the top where I was using this commander right over here, and I was using a not expertise version of him on my restart project. This is a 57 million power account. Well, lost a couple million during uh, our KVK battling so far, and there'll be more ahead. However, this build I find works really, really well. The alternative is a skill-focused build, which would be over here. I would not recommend this build personally, and the reason I wouldn't recommend it is that most of these fights are really short, and because the fights are short, you're enjoying the benefit of Rally and Cry 15% extra damage, and that is a big deal for the first 10 seconds of entering the battle. With that said, there really is also some high value here from having Feral Nature. This will reduce the amount of time, typically, that it takes to fire off your active skill by about one turn, uh, because you get 100 Rage, which is really solid. There's a 10% chance during your attacks to get that, so it doesn't happen all the time, and sometimes it happens a couple times in a row, which is really very solid. We also went and we picked up a little bit of skill damage taken reduction because these cavalry are so squishy. They are so squishy. Minamoto is a glass cannon. He does a lot of damage. He cannot take damage well. If you wanted to see, by the way, this is the Minamoto I was using on my restart project. It is a 5512. It is not expertise. And I would say if you are not going to expertise this commander, but you want to use them in the field and for barbarians, try to max the first two skills, then take them to four stars. That way, you put as many points as possible into combat-oriented stuff. Everything here is combat-oriented. This is just for barbarians, whereas these points will be good for barbarians and players. You see what I mean? After, again, you max these first, you go to four stars, and hopefully your points land over here. I got pretty lucky. And honestly, before battling in King's Land, it's possible I should have bought a few more sculptures and got another skill on this commander. That actually would have been extremely reasonable, and I could have certainly done more optimization for this account, and that's the sort of thing that I think you should be looking at. Can I go and get 10 more sculptures right now? Would it be worth it? What's the cheapest Minamoto bundle I can get? Well, 50 bucks. So I don't know if I'd pay 50 bucks for like one more skill. But I'll put up onto the screen the number of sculptures you need to unlock each skill level. That way you can have a, that as a reference point for when you're applying skills to this commander. And if you're considering like, hey, do I buy this chest or not? Is it worth some small number of skills? And I'll say that these chests really are so much more valuable in the very early game in Rise of Kingdoms. Uh, the sooner I would have done this, the more value I would have gotten, which is why at this point, like, I'm probably not going to do it on this account. I could have. I don't really need to. I'm trying to be minimally spendy here, but you get the idea. So if you're just starting in Rise of Kingdoms, then I think Minamoto is a pretty freaking solid investment. Yeah, it is a non-trivial amount of money, but if you just go with some of the smaller tiers, you can get a pretty solid position for your Minamoto, kind of like how we have here. And that'll serve you really well for a really long time. You'll use this for rallying Barbarian Forts, which will be fine for most Barbarian Forts that you're rallying, even not Expertise. And the more skills you have in him, the better. Now, I won't go too in-depth in this video about pairings, because I've done that in several other videos. I'll have a card up in the top that can take you directly to a detailed breakdown of the pairings that you might use with Minamoto in the early game. But, hey, spoiler alert, it's a Cavalry Commander. Pair with other Cavalry Commanders. Okay, and if you're pairing with another commander that does high skill damage and is not a cavalry commander, that's okay too. That I think will work really well. Perfect example of that would be Frederick I or Osman. Both of them not cavalry commanders, but do tons of damage, and Minamoto is all about dealing that big damage. If you enjoyed this video, do me a huge favor, throw a like on the video. That actually does support the video tremendously. And consider subscribing for daily Rise of Kingdoms videos and commander guides designed to help you get value and smash your enemies. Until next time, my friends, you have fun smashing the kingdom.